honestly, I will love it if we beat them. Love it. Yes, everyone, welcome to another edition of the Warm Down today. Delighted to be joined by Quinton Fortune. How are you doing, man? Thank you, I'm good. Thank you, how are you? Before we get into this, you need to go and check out Mike Clegg's channel because there's a brilliant hour-long episode where Quinny goes in depth on all sorts of stuff. So this one is a cheeky little one. It's not going to yeah. be an hour long, but uh, thanks to Quinny for joining us. So, you've been to see Ole Gunnar Solskjaer this week. Mm -hmm. How is it? Ole is in good spirit. Um, him and Mick and Mike Harrigan, and Kieran and the lads look... Uh, they were enjoying themselves obviously in training, the place is buzzing and uh, that family feeling is there again and, uh, and thanks to Ollie for bringing that back because we've been, uh, we've been missing that since the boss retired and I'm um, looking forward to this week against Fulham but um, no, Ollie's in good spirit and pff, can't wait to look forward to the game now the weekend. So you said you wanted to just go pop by because you've not seen him since he's yeah. come back and, and it's, it's made the club feel like it did under Sir Alex yeah. by the fact that any old players and that can just go and drop by and yeah, go and speak uh, to everybody. I mean, that's the kind of character Ollie was and still is and uh, so down to earth. Um, it's amazing when you meet Ollie. It's, it's strange, he's, the, man, he's the, the, Manchester, the manager of Manchester United and Ollie just takes it in his stride. He's so calm about it and so humble about it and uh, he just... Um, he just created that environment again where uh, that was Alex created, where players you knew you had to come in, you work hard, you express yourself, you enjoy yourself most of all because you're the best club in the world, mm. and you're playing for Manchester United. <laughs> Enough said there, and and Oli, when I watched the lads training yesterday, they're just having fun. You know, all these good players, they're having fun. They their team, and and when you walk around the Aeon Training Centre, everyone in the, in, the, in the canteen and smiling again, and then. That welcoming feeling is there again, and it's brilliant. And that's what we've missed for so many years. And and thanks to Ole and and, and Mick and, and and like I said, uh, Kieran and my character for bringing that back. But obviously Ole is the main figure. And like I said, now I go to games excited again, and uh, and because I know we're going to play attacking football. We got the players. We got Ole create uh, brought back that mentality again about playing attacking football of course hard work and, and defensive work it's a given that should be that was also the Manchester United as a given but uh, you had to make sure you do your part which is playing attacking football excite the fans again and you look at the results the last couple of weeks it's been absolutely brilliant it almost seems too easy to have gone down the way it's gone down doesn't it it doesn't seem like it's been any sort of hardship for him it just seems mm -hmm. to have breezed into the place lifted yep. the mood lightened the mood yep. allowed everyone to just sort of just get this freedom yeah. about how they're going down with everything and he's he's made us all like you said en enjoy it yeah. most importantly the players look like they're enjoying yeah. it Marcus Rashford is trying things on the pitch that I, would, I don't think he does yeah. in training he's, just, he's absolutely well, going for it you've got someone uh, like an Ollie there now that understands the culture of the club he's been there uh, he understands what is required to be a Manchester United player and um, when Ollie obviously spent so many years at United and under Alex so he knew what is required of what is required of a Manchester United player, and probably just told the players what he was told by Alex. Um, and it mad it's that easy. Or it, it clearly isn't that easy, mm -hmm. but it, it looks almost like he's yeah. done it easily. Well, we have to. We, we mustn't forget that Ollie's been a student of the game or been a manager for the last ten years. So he also bring his own experience. But at the same time, the values of Manchester United has always been there, and he's obviously remember that. The, the master, the master stroke. But the, the the good thing is he brought Mick feeling with him as well. Yeah. Some How important is he? Oh my goodness, Mick. Because uh, you came at the same time yeah. that Mick was promoted to the assistant yeah. boss in the first team. So how important? What is he doing? Because Mick, this is what we never find out. Mick uh, has has got such a nature, a calm nature, where uh, he helps with, on, the, on the tactical side. He's the link between the manager and the players. So when anything needs to be, obviously the boss is, is the final word, but mix organized things in a quiet way that you, you don't see and speaks to place individually and just calm things his nature is a calm nature everything that goes crazy around you look at Mick calm and you need that figure you need that experience and when uh, uh, making decisions Ollie can always depend on Mick and, and, and get his advice and uh, um, for me it's it's great to have Mick there and you can see the the difference in the players now the way they behave and the way they train and and the results and the, you can see the evidence on the football pitch they look so happy um, like you said Paul Bogba uh, Rashford Jesse and uh, Alexis Sanchez Lukaku and, 
And I think, I don't know what Ali said to them, but I'm just assuming that he probably just reminded them, look, you're playing for the best club in the world, you're good players, go and express yourself. Make sure you work hard, because that's, really cool. that's a given at Manchester United. And um, play as a team. Obviously, Ali's got a good understanding of the game, tactically, and this is how he wants you to play. But playing attacking football, because that's... <laughs> the main thing that's why we go to, to Old Trafford that's why uh, we enjoy watching the team like uh, when Marcus gets the ball he's running at people uh, um, uh, um, what's his name I forget his name will come to me now uh, wow a winger a French <laughs> Anthony Marshall Anthony Marshall oh, no. <laughs> excuse me Anthony Marshall <laughs> no, I'm just went blank I love watching Anthony Marshall because that's the Manchester United kind of player. Gets the ball, run it to the defenders. And the close control is, close. is just naughty. This is, but it's this inexplicable. is And for, it was confusing for me because the last couple of months when I watched them, and I used to see the team come out and they were defensive, I was like, no, 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 this is not Manchester United. We come out and attack. The other team are normally defensive. And uh, Ole just brought that back and um, it's absolutely brilliant and, and, and long, long, long. Please may that continue, please God. So, uh, oh, we fucking riot. How about yeah, that? We want Oli to stay. <laughs> I want Oli to stay personally, and he's the right man for the job because he understands the culture. He's got the great nature about himself, and uh, he's for me a Manchester United manager. There's, I understand the culture. You understand the culture. Mm -hmm. But the guy's gone out there mm -hmm. and won nine in ten games. That's not just understanding the culture, but yeah. going proving that you're good enough for the job. You can, how can you give it to somebody else after this? I don't think you can. I d it, it will be beyond me to, to think of anything. I can't think of any other manager now to come in. Yeah. Uh, before, I have to say, it was, I was thinking about other managers, but since Ollie's come in and whoever's been behind it, I kind of have a feeling it was behind us. And, um, but it's absolutely <laughs> a, it's a master stroke to, 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 to bring Ollie in because. Uh, it, it fits in everything. Everything Oli does is Manchester United. And um, you can see now the players responding to it and um, with him and Mick and, and, and Mike Carrick and, and Kieran is just absolutely brilliant. And we've got another big game coming up, another test. It's great, it's another challenge. But this is what happens when you play for Manchester United. But I feel up for this now. I yeah. can't wait for Tuesday night. Old yeah. Trafford, lights on, Champions League yeah. music. I'm excited yeah. already, I can't wait. When we made the draw, I did the draw for Full Time Devils, and I was like, "Here's the team who gets the honour of knocking United out of the cup this year." Yeah, I don't feel like that anymore. But I think we're beating them. I think we all were in that same position, and uh, it was uh, it was hard for me because I always tried to stay positive, and and, and in the last few months when things were going, uh, or the lads weren't playing the football that I know they were capable of. But now I go into games, having that old feeling again, it's like great there's another challenge with playing PSG but we haven't forget we've got Fulham first that's the first one we get out of with but this is why you play for Manchester United you want to play the best teams and uh, they come with their best players they come with their style of play we Manchester United and no not in an arrogant way in a disrespectful way but this is how the club's been run for so many years and all we have to do is continue that same mentality character style of play and go and take it to them and See what happens. Right, cheers for that. Right, we have got some questions from you guys on Patreon. If you want to know more about the Patreon group, hit the link in the description below and you get all the extra benefits like this. So, we have got some questions for you guys. Um, Connor's asked, how difficult was it growing up in South Africa and moving at such a young age to Spain? Um, it was difficult in terms of, uh, how can I say, um, the crime, uh, the drugs and that stuff. So. Not that I was involved in it, just you can get caught up in that because where I grew up, that was uh, happening on a, on a normal basis. For example, I lived in, we lived in a flat called Q Town and, and we were right at the top on the seventh floor. So as soon as I opened my door to come downstairs, there were guys smoking on, on our stairs drugs. So that was the first thing I saw in the morning before I got to school. So already I get to school, I'm, I'm very happy and teachers don't wonder why I'm so happy because I've just been walking through and no, I'm just joking. But that's the first thing I saw. <laughs> so I was high most of the time. I was wondering why he's so happy. <laughs> joking. <laughs> just joking. But that's the first thing I saw and then you see gang fights and you see shooting and, and so in and that part it was hard because no human being should, should grow up in that environment. But the other part was I love football and I played football every single day so my focus was when I came from school, where's the next game? You got an academy over there? Now? I got an academy, yeah, uh, in Manchester called the Quinton Fortune Academy. You have one over there as well? I had a football club called FC Fortune a couple of years right. ago. 
uh, and I had to stop it because they weren't running it. I wasn't there. I was still playing at United, and it wasn't run the way I wanted to. So I started uh, my academy over here called the Quinton Forge Football Academy, and uh, it's from five to thirteen. So that's something I love doing because someone found me as, as a kid and coached me. So I just want to coach the kids and and um, help them with their skills, and so they can get better. Awesome. Um, this is from Andy Rogers says, "How difficult was it adjusting to the Premier League and playing for a club like United?" Physically, it's it's a big change because I came from Spain and coming to Manchester United after they won Athletic the treble. Madrid's not a small team, though. Sorry, Atletico Madrid's not a small. No, team. It's, but it's not Manchester United. It's a big step. Um, they, they're probably the third biggest team in Spain after Athletic, uh, Real Madrid and after Barcelona, Real Madrid. But um, coming to United in the in the time I arrived, let me know, coming to United at any time is difficult. Not. Especially after they've won everything in the in world football. Yeah, you joined in the summer of '99. Yeah, yeah. Mm, I'm not going to get in this team. Uh, Roy, can you just say no? But look, I was never ever going to say no if I have the opportunity to come to United. It's, it's a no-brainer. It's like you just go. And uh, I didn't care where I played as long as I played for Manchester United and uh, uh, end up playing left back, left midfield, centre midfield. I didn't care. I just wanted to be on that pitch with my teammates and help them win every single game I can and uh, it was the best beyond my wildest dreams best moments ever in my life um, what's your favorite message from Ryan uh, what is your favorite memory from your time at United what's my favorite message from memory memory from time United time United it's so, first of all my debut when I made my debut uh, score my debut that's special enough but to have my mum and dad there because when I left in 91 they knew I played football. They never see me play football. Really? So this is the first time they see me live. Was it United? At United. Wow. So this is uh, beyond crazy. And for me, it makes it even more special because uh, my dad took me to the first movie. I was five years old. It's called a movie called Escape to Victory. And oh, they had course. Pelé, Bobby Moore, Asia Dealers, and all these people and, and uh, players in there. And uh, uh, after the movie, my dad just, I remember as a five-year-old, he mentioned someone's name, and the name he mentioned was George Best. Now, my dad was a diehard United fan in South Africa. I didn't know, I was a kid, I was like, George Best, okay, whatever, yeah. <laughs> so to, to, for me to end up playing for Manchester United so many years later, and to have my, my, my parents there, yeah. That was awesome. Come on. Um, did you ever personally experience the hair dryer treatment from oh, yeah. Alex? That's why my hair's still short. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh my goodness, I had it. What'd you do? You just, you just take it. You don't say anything back to the boss and you just make sure whatever the boss just said to you there, when you get an opportunity to play again or go out the second half, you do your job properly. Then you got it at half time? Yeah. What for? Uh, Jumping out of the tackle, or the first I think I just arrived in Spain and, and never did that afterwards. After that again, <laughs> and when you misplace a pass or not doing, the boss knew the level that was required at Manchester United, and once you're not reaching that level, he let you know. So yeah, it was uh, didn't happen very often, but yeah, when the, once the boss let you know, you made sure you never do that again. Uh, Arshin's got. What was your favourite country to travel to, visit, or visit in Asia? In Asia. Wow. Hyper specific there, mate. Uh, Where did you win the World uh, Club Cup or the Intercontinental Cup? Was that in Tokyo? That was in Tokyo. That was just, I arrived and it was a bit weird because I think I was, yeah, I was on the bench with that game and it was just an amazing experience because I just came from Atletico Madrid and yeah, I'm flying to Tokyo with United playing for the World Club Champion. <laughs> like, come on, what's going on? So, in Asia, that probably have to be. Uh, Wow, think Singapore? Nice, because it's so clean. And I mean, it's small, but uh, I love Malaysia because Malaysia we have a big Malayan community in, in Cape Town, so the food is amazing over there. Thailand is amazing as well. The food, oh my god, the people, unbelievable over there. So there's a few places. Yeah. Uh, from Stu, who was your favourite team to play against? Uh, was there a team you didn't like playing against? Favorite team to play against? I think it was probably Arsenal because the, the at that time when we were oh, playing, the rivalry, the, the rivalry was so big and the competition was amazing. And they had great players, we had great players, and you knew when you played them, it, everything was on the line. Um, 
and obviously Keeney saw that with Patrick Vieira at the Ivory. That was a <sighs> yeah. Was you in that game? I was in the I was in the in the bench in that game. It was just like, what just happened there? And he's just like, wow. And um, that was yeah. one of my favourite ever Premier League games. Yeah. Just as a pure, I mean, not even I'm not neutral, but I can imagine as a neutral, it was just amazing because it was back and forward, it was end to end, yeah. and it was unbelievable. It was brilliant. Um, yeah, Arsenal, and of course I forgot. Not that I forgot, but Liverpool, because there's nothing better than than winning at Danfield. Oh, it's the best feeling ever. Uh, Jack says, "What was Sir Alex like? How did he man manage you? Was he hard on you, or did he put an arm around your shoulder?" The boss was hard, but you um, put the arm around his shoulder in the right time. He knew what he, he knew what to say uh, in the right moments, and um, that's probably what would make him such a great manager. His man management. He knew how to. Uh, deal with young players when the young players were coming through like Ronaldo and Rooney he knew how to treat them and the likes of his senior players Dwight Yorkini and, and, and his players but um, amazing man managing the boss was amazing the hour before the game his team talk he was all about Manchester United it was all about what we need to do um, never hardly focus on the opposition if he did say anything about the opposition it would probably be taking a piss out of them or something but it was always about what we need to do and uh, you felt you felt like uh, you want to run through a brick wall for him. Um, absolutely brilliant, yeah. Uh, JD says, what role do you see the club play in the development of talent overseas, specifically within Africa? That's a great question. Um, I'm sure they've got scouts all over oh, sure. the world, and especially in, in Africa as well. I would like to see more African players, especially from my country, South Africa, to come and play for United in the future. But it's also... Um, it takes a lot of hard work because to come and play for United, it's a high, high level, and you need to have the right mentality. Obviously, the talent is important, but it's the mentality as well um, to to deal with the pressure of having to win every single game and uh, dealing with now in terms of social media, the fame and, and and all that comes with it. Because whatever you do at Manchester United, it's it's oh, all can, over. Can you even imagine what it'd be like? It, it, back then, it would have been an absolute. I can't imagine. Like now, it's crazy. But the likes of David. I'm just trying to imagine David Beckham. It would have been an absolute <laughs> nightmare. And, and I'm glad. Well, I'm very fortunate now that this come at this time because the boss, first of all, wouldn't allow it. Uh, Rio was the one that sort of broke the mold there, yeah. wasn't he? And, and got himself on sweat. Yeah. Early the door. boss, I don't think, would have allowed it then. And because uh, it, it was all about football. It was all about making sure you do your business on the football pitch and then you go home quietly like, like the best example was Scolzi Scolzi yeah. was an absolute genius on the football pitch and you hardly you hardly heard yes Scolzi leave the training ground he would disappear after training honestly we would look in the locker Ghost. like where is he <laughs> and you see him tomorrow morning first thing he used to run out and bust his Scolzi first thing he did ping the ball boom straight to the goals never had a injury a hamstring problem and you doing all your stretches you do yoga and everything Skulls just goes boom brilliant uh, Skulls uh, this is going out on Sunday but this is he's literally just been cleared to be the older manager oh my he's goodness. often linked with been linked yeah. with it for years yeah. finally happened yeah. do you think he's going to be a, a good manager they are very lucky and fortunate to have Skulls um, I've done uh, a couple of sessions when I was doing my A licence and I saw Skulls and he was coaching the kids and brilliant just through his nature and um, he's a winner like we've seen all his career and I'm sure if Skulls goes into he wouldn't go into there knowing that he can't win he would go in there knowing he's going to do everything in his power to uh, the greatest successful older team and I think it's the sky's the limit for Skulls because I feel sorry for his players because <laughs> Imagine he joins in training session. He's probably still going to be the best player. And if he wants, if he wants to demonstrate something, you often see that amazing players go into management and yeah. don't make the greatest of managers. And often cited as the reason for that is that they get frustrated when the players can't live up to their yeah. standards. What they are as a yeah. footballer. He's going into a League Two side. Yeah. Is that going to likely be an issue? Do you think with Scholes? I would like to think Scholes has got now the understanding and the patience because. It's impossible for him to, to, to think, looking at the outside now. It's impossible for him to go in there expecting players to be at the level ever at that he was, or creating the level that oh, the le level he might be at now. Exactly. So <laughs> I think he's probably going there with an open mind. Is is, is, is causes 
humility is, is unbelievable. So I think he'll go down there and work as much as he can with the group of players he's got. I'm sure he's going to get a very good assistant with him. That's going to help him. Uh, Who do you reckon he's going for? Who do you reckon gets that call? I don't know. There's so many he can use. I mean, I mean, he's, he's worked with Rennie as well. Um, That's not a bad shout. It's a good shout because uh, Rennie obviously understands the culture of United and uh, Joyce, Warren Joyce. Um, there's a few managers, but I'm sure Scholes will have done his homework to make sure when he goes in there, he obviously is the manager, but he needs that amazing assistant coach that's preparing his team and, 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 and using all these ideas. Because if I'm a chairman of the club and, and, and I bring in Scholes here, I want to make sure they get as much as information as possible what runs through his mind. Because he sees the pitch of three minutes or five minutes before everyone else. So we just, we're just catching up. So it's a... Uh, uh, it's a great move for him and, and um, I wish him everything of the best he's in, like I said he was a genius as a player and imagine he can put all that um, he, he, the ideas that he has in his head over to his players it's going to be amazing I heard when you were talking to Mike that you said you wanted to complete your coaching badges and give mm -hmm. you a full pro licence yep. are we going to see you on the sideline in a suit one day? that's my plan that's my plan um, like I said I've had a taste at uh, under Warren Joyce and working with the 21s and then with Ole at, at, at Cardiff and uh, I really enjoyed it and I just love football, so if if I can get my coaching, well, that's why I'm going to get my coaching badges. Obviously, the dream is to to work at United, but um, I've got to go if I have to go anywhere else and and, and learn my trade and and, and uh, coach every day and become a, a better coach and a manager. That's what I'm willing to do. But got, I just, got goals number? <laughs> I'm not sure. If, I'm not. To be honest, I'm not sure if I'm uh, at that level yet to go in there. Of course, if goals you called, you you go. Um, but I'm not sure if uh, if I'm the right man. There's many, many other good coaches out there, but of course, if Scholes, he calls. I'm not um, going to say no. Jack's got another question. It says, you was obviously in the same team as uh, Ollie for a good few years. Was there anything in him as a player where you was like, one day he's going to be a manager? You don't think that when you're playing. You just think, uh, you just think winning the game in training because you want to win every single day. And then you think about... Um, winning uh, the game on a Saturday or Sunday or during the week so we just think about winning and playing football and, and competing but you always uh, uh, I always saw Ole practicing doing extra in terms of his finishing um, absolutely a machine he was ruthless in front of goal honestly he was uh, I don't know how many amount of goals Ole scored when uh, defenders used to close him down and kick it or shoot through the, through his legs and we always used to say ah it's a fluke he actually practiced that so it was just uh it was amazing. Um, George, Alex Stepney told me once about George Best. We had Alex Stepney in, and he said, on a, they all went to go and watch. Uh, who was they playing? Liverpool. Mm -hmm. They went to watch Liverpool one week. They didn't have a game, and uh, in, George Best noticed something that the Liverpool goalkeeper did at the time. So on the Friday in training, he grabs Paddy Crerar and he goes, right, when when the defensive line steps up on you, dink a ball over the top. I'm going to go one on one with the keeper. And he grabs Alex. He goes, right, just do what you normally do. So Alex comes out and he had this weird technique that they would do. I don't think the goalkeepers do it anymore. Mm. Where they would uh, they would rush out and try almost jump at the feet of the player. Mm. He probably just take the player out by then. I'm yeah. imagining. And he said, as I'm about to jump, George plays it off my shin, like one twos it to himself, and then passes it in the goal where I'm not there. And I was like, he goes, uh, what do you think of that? And he was like, a bit confused. And he yeah. goes, the next day at Liverpool, he goes this move happens Paddy Pink dinks it over the top he goes one on one with the goalkeeper he plays it off the goalkeeper and he passes it into the net now if you hadn't known that he'd have done that on the Friday yeah. you'd have gone I was a bit of a fluke weren't you but George Best was training yeah. for that shit genius <laughs> and you look at the football pits they were playing on then oh god yeah you couldn't guarantee just, a bounce coming back ridiculous. off that not like the carpet nowadays. and that's when people like I speak to some ex-players now and they say like Messi's amazing and this one's amazing but when I hear and I see the clips of George Best and I see the the, the, the football pitch they played on, and when you speak to ex-players, he was frightening, like scary. The level of the balance, the skill, and now in every condition, the pitch will always be fine at mm. Old Trafford and on most pitches yeah, around. Protection from the referees, allowed protection. to dribble. So if he was playing now, he would have been embarrassing to some people. But uh, so people say you can't compare generations. No, I can. He was just unbelievable. And like I said, I love Pele, so I would put him there next to Pele. And even Pele said George Best was amazing. So if Pele says that, in my opinion, Pele is the greatest ever. So 
I'm not going to argue with anything. Uh, I think that this that is Martin the last is. question we've got with you. Uh, so it's uh, from Nathan. He says, with AFCON moving to European summer, do you feel as though there will be an increase in club scouting of African talent? This is the best thing AFCON could have done. I would have loved that to happen when I was playing because the year San for United, I had to leave, uh, just got into the team, started to play well, I had to go to the African Nations Cup. Fergie actually come out and said, didn't he, we're not going to sign players from Africa. It's a of nightmare. Them. It's a nightmare. And, and that's where you find uh, the, the conflict between country and club because you, the play always suffers because you want to play for your club because that pays your wages and your bread and butter. At the same time, it's an honor to play for your country. Mm. So when you say to your country, look up. <laughs> I just got a United team. We've got like the best team in the world here. Yeah. I've really done my best to get in the team. I'm playing regularly. And then I have to leave. And when I leave, of course, I will get everything for my country. It's my heart and everything. But then I come back and I have to struggle to get in the team. But they don't understand that. So they always think the players. And then in my situation, the media back home portrays you like you're turning your back on the country. <laughs> Never, ever would I turn my back on my country. I love South Africa. Uh, I give everything for the country. Oh, Every competition I came through the ranks, I played on the 23s, played in the Olympics, played all the African Nations Cup games, and and it showed that of course I want to be there, but at the same time is that once in a lifetime of Chinese can play for Manchester United, there's got to be understanding. So when they move the Afcon near the end of the season, it will open so many doors for, for African players. You will see more African players coming to Europe, and it's the best thing Afcon. So to Afcon, bravo! Isn't it going to be a little bit hot? In Africa, in summer. No, because when it's your summer of year, it's winter back home for us. Yeah, even in northern Africa. In northern, you, some African countries, it's still hot, um, ridiculous hot. But uh, believe you me, it's, you'll find a way to get through. I mean, the, the, when is when is the next World Cup in Qatar? Yeah, we're gonna see how hot that is. That's gonna be hot. But look, when you're playing football, you find a way. It's it's, uh, it's what you love doing, but. Um, just the, just the timing of it, it's, it's, it will help so many players and, and, and that conflict between uh, club and country and uh, yeah, you definitely will see more players in Europe now, African players. Awesome. Right. Uh, thank you guys on Patreon that have sent in your questions. Like I said, if you want to find out more about that, hit the link in the description. Quinny, thank you very much. This is awesome. Pleasure. Thank you. Nice to speak to you. Um, subscribe if you're new, hit the like and get your comments and queries and all that sort of stuff in the comments below. Laters. Beautiful. Beautiful.